Good morning, everyone. I'm Anita Huberman. I'm CEO of the Surrey Board of Trade and welcome to our digital learning lab at Surrey's only city building business organization. I wanted to remind you that if you do have any questions during this session, please put your questions or your comments in the chat function and we will get to them as soon as we can. If we're unable to answer your questions, we will get back to you after the session is over. And thank you so much for joining us. I just wanted to indicate uh, before I introduce our speaker, that uh, the Surrey Board of Trade, we have been so active for Surrey's business community during the pandemic, and we continue to be that. Uh, we're one of nine organizations as part of the Premier's Economic Recovery Task Force. And in fact, today, later on, the Premier is going to announce phase one of British Columbia's Economic Recovery Plan. And I also wanted to let you know that we have a direct line into the Prime Minister's office uh, to identify on the ground gaps and opportunities for businesses. And that's just been so useful as uh, we've been through this very uncertain and still uncertain economic future. And we have the only rapid response business center. So we are there for you as a part of our COVID playbook for business that is going to be released uh, in early October, but we already have been offering and will continue to offer through our business center, the connections that you need, the advocacy, the workforce development. We are there to offer you value. So if you need anything, contact the Surrey Board of Trade. Check us out at www.businessinsurrey.com. During this time, businesses have had to innovate. Uh, they've had to utilize technology in order to uh, get sales, in order to meet, in order to communicate, to ensure that health and safety protocols are adhered to. And uh, many of us are looking for unique ways to set the bar even higher when it comes to digital meetings. So whatever platform you're using, uh, today's session is going to be very useful for you. Uh, if we're going to talk more about Zoom, we're on a Zoom platform, uh, but uh, your speaker is going to talk about how to get a professional camera ready look for that meeting so that you have an unforgettable experience with your client. How the position of the camera is crucial uh, in terms of making an impression and how specific actionable items can make you look like a pro even in the digital environment that we're in. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome Ms. Margaret Page. She has uh, significant experience uh, in ensuring that businesses have executive presence and, and she's an etiquette expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Margaret Page. Margaret, over to you. Thank you so much, Anita. Lights, camera, action. That's certainly a phrase that we in North America associate with, it's showtime. And I would like you to think in those terms whenever you get on a Zoom meeting or Blue Jeans Teams meeting, whatever it is, many of the principles that we're going to talk about in our time together will serve you in all of those platforms. So we have a question and answer feature here in Zoom webinar. And uh, you have the opportunity to ask questions, but we're going to reverse it a little bit today. And I'm going to ask you some questions and you can come with your responses. So if you would like to put right now in the question and answer, which is on the bottom on the menu bar, is what you would like to get out of this session today, then I can make sure that I cover everyone's needs in this particular meeting. So go ahead and do that. Many of you have been in Zoom meetings since February and have already learned a lot. And some of you may already be 
zoomed out and thinking, wow, can I really do another Zoom meeting? Well, in our time together, I'm going to share with you some information how to make it fun and exciting for you. My experience with delivering online began about 10 years ago. The, one of the advantage of living in British Columbia is that we have the far north that it, and our winter condition that didn't always allow for training in the far north. And so as technology started to develop, we began using webinar services. And in the early days, I can tell you, it was very difficult. Bandwidth was difficult. Platforms would work into your computer and plug things up. And it was not what it is today. Today, the platform, Zoom, team meetings, um, house party, all of them have fabulous, fabulous platforms. But uh, in that early stages, we still have some of the memes or some of the ways that we were doing business back then have carried forward. And so we need to modify and adapt some of those so that we can uh, focus on what it is we need to do. All right. So in our time together, I'm going to give you some tips and tools to help you be more professional, to help you have greater impact whenever you are in an online virtual meeting, and to help you have some strategies to connect better with your audience. Now I'm going to ask Heather if she could be watching in the Q&A for me and if there's an important element there that she would like to share to go ahead and interrupt me and share that someone has this particular question while I'm running the slide deck. So the areas, of course, that I mentioned to you are we're going to talk about lighting, what's best for meetings, in an affordable way. And we're going to talk about the camera on your laptop or how you can have additional pieces. And of course, we're going to talk about action. What actions, what movements, what works best on a Zoom platform. All right. So many of us in our day-to-day -day life, in our in our offices, in our homes. We are used to having the light behind us so it shines over our shoulder and lights up our working platform. But in a meeting, in a virtual meeting, that's not where you want the light is behind you. Where you want the light is in front of you. And I just came off working on an international convention where we had 61,000 people entered or registered for that particular event. And as production crews were guiding us along on how to set up our Zoom meeting, I can tell you it was difficult during different parts of the day, the production crew would have me move my laptop and move my, so you always want to have whatever natural light is coming into your room straight ahead of you. Think wherever the light is, that's the way, the direction that I want to point my body and that's where I want my laptop in front of me. So I hope uh, that's doable. That's not always doable, but you can get a little portable table or you can um, move around and just find that right spot in your office or wherever it is. And so that's critical is lighting. If we can't see your face, it's a challenge in a meeting, in a Zoom meeting or any other kind of virtual meeting. Because we no longer have the ability 
to see our entire body. Most of us, if you're a professional speaker, you may have the kind of setup where you can see your entire body, but most of us attending meetings and being a part of meetings, we don't have that opportunity. And so what it means is we need our faces to really describe more effectively what we are speaking about so audience or those in attendance get it and understand it. And in addition to the natural light, you can use things called ring lights. A number of years ago, when I first started getting into doing some video work, I bought an elaborate setup from Amazon. It was about $500. It had six or seven different huge lights that took up a lot of space in my office. However, in the last year, I've discarded all that for a simple ring light. You can purchase ring lights at uh, many of your technology suppliers could be Amazon, Best Buy, wherever it is, you have the opportunity to purchase those. So there's ring lights that are 18, 19 inch, which many people are using to create YouTube videos or whatever. You also need them just to be in a meeting so that your face is fully in view of those in attendance. You can also get a larger uh, ring light which sits on a tripod the smaller ones do as well but it's a larger ring light I believe they're about 27 inches so depending what kind of space you have that you're recording or the space that you are sitting in in meetings I encourage you to have a ring light so the same thing with the natural light straight in front of you if however the natural light is on one side, you could put your ring light on the other side, but what you're looking for is where are the shadows on my face so that people can't see what I'm trying to express. And if you look at some of the original studies from communication, particular the Moravian study that happened decades ago, often quoted about how much we get from the visual and it's often that research is misinterpreted to be the communication of the words that we say seven percent 38 percent is the tone of voice or through the voice and uh, the meaning is uh, 55 percent from what we see visually but that research was about the emotion that we understand from the message. So if you want your audience to really feel you and understand you, particularly if you're using meetings to inspire people, to get them to take action, to perhaps buy your product, you want to make sure that you're well lit up and that you have no shadows. Now I'm just going to check the chat box for a moment here to make sure. So Margaret, we have a question. Sure. Uh, is, is sitting in front of a window too bright? Um, well, if you've looked at yourself and you see that you've sitting in front of the window is where you want. So you want the window in front of you and you have the opportunity to look at your own picture. And so if you see that it's too bright, then you need to pull blinds down or do whatever, move to another room to find a better view of yourself. You can also call a friend and uh, create your own quick Zoom meeting and say, give me some feedback here because we don't always see how we look. So give that a try and hopefully um, you'll be able to solve that. Is there any other questions, Heather? Uh, the next question you might answer a little bit later. So we'll get to that uh, okay. after. Okay. What I see is that most people are using Zoom for meetings and that they're looking for tips and tricks. Now, back on the camera, I just want to say the quality of your camera is important if you are gesturing at all. If you have 
a camera that's of a certain quality, your gestures, your hand movements will look very different. It will be missing pieces. So be aware of that. And if you are using your hands to impact, to enhance what you're speaking about, you want to make sure that your camera has the ability to capture that. Otherwise, you have to move much more slowly and much more intentionally. Others also, it depends on their camera, their ability to see you effectively, but those are the two things. Your camera impacts your image, their camera and their quality of their laptop also will impact the image of what they see. So if you wanna showcase yourself to your best, be aware of your camera in your laptop or on your desktop, your device, and if it's not uh, adequate quality, then you can add an external camera and, um, and have that uh, show up a, a better, better quality. So uh, that's what we were talking about, the quality of the device and the bandwidth. Now, if you've lived in British Columbia, I'm sure you've had some difficulty with bandwidth and over the last year or so, as all of us are having meetings online, bandwidth is very important. And you've had routers, you've had, um, had to hard, hard wire things in, we've had extenders, all these things you've had to ramp up your bandwidth all these things so that we can be more effective in meetings that are here to stay i would believe even if or i shouldn't say if when we find a vaccine i'm sure that we will continue to have meetings in this model or what's become known as hybrid meetings where we have some people in the room and some people that may be in far distancing. One of the silver linings, of course, is this pandemic that we're going through, is the connection of people around the world. And although we had the ability to last year, six months ago, for now, we are reaching out with businesses, associations, organizations, and meeting people around the world. And that will continue off into the future and so it behooves you well to be able to operate in this platform very effectively. Now one of the biggest challenges in speaking online on a virtual platform is where you position your camera. Often as a speaker, I was used to being on stage. And so those sitting in their audience would be at a lower level and you were just elevated. So you would stand out and be easily seen by the audience. Well, on camera, that doesn't feel good if a speaker is looking down at the audience. For one reason, the audience and the attendees are in the comfort of their own home and it feels a little bit like a one-on-one -on -one conversation and also it's condensed into whatever the size of your screen is and so it's much more impactful in a smaller space. And so we want to be able to meet our audience, our attendees at the same level. So whatever you need to do to position your laptop, your screen, your camera at eye level. So you are looking at eye level with your attendees. Now, at first, I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just have a water. All right. At first, I use shoe boxes. Just a moment here. I'm going to uh, uh, mute for a minute.
All right. Thank you for that, for your patience during that. So I use shoe boxes. You can also get stands. And if you have a desk that elevates, that also helps where you can lay, raise up your camera to eye level. If you're on a mobile device, that's a little bit challenging because you have to hold up your phone at that eye level and be aware that if you're holding your phone in portrait and you're recording the video, you're going to get those lines on either side. But if you record in landscape, then you won't get those bars on the side that we often see on releases on Facebook or whatever, where people have captured a certain image. And also be aware that not to lean in too deeply because also you will have that image of, of, um, of looking down on someone. So you want to remember what your mother had said when you were young about good posture, so shoulders back, and you will look more confident and more professional. Also cautionary about how close you are to your camera. We generally recommend about an arm's length away from your camera, which is about right, which can get your shoulders in and a little bit um, for, and this is a good visual for meetings. And uh, you'll notice the space just above my head, there is, only about five or 10% of the pain that's above my head. And why that is, is should I make any sudden movements, I'm still not the top of my head, isn't going to be bopped off. But on the other hand, I'm taking as much presence of my pain as my um, virtual pain as possible. And the head, that's the head position that you need to have when you're in virtual meetings to be as effective as you possibly can be. Now you have two views, many of you that have been in meetings, you're aware that you have the gallery view which shows in meetings, everyone that's in the meeting and up to a certain point you might have several panes depending on how many people are in the audience you could have several panes that you might have to focus through or you can set it on speaker view where the speaker is highlighted and takes up more full screen you also have the opportunity to pin someone if you're eager to capture someone and know and understand what they're doing you can pin them which if you'll notice in the everyone's pain, there is a little blue square on the right hand side that has three dots that gives you the opportunity to change your name, unmute yourself and also to pin someone. So just select their, their um, pinning and, uh, and then they will light up in your screen if you need them to. Also, it's really good practice to always have your camera on. We did get in the model of always turning our camera off because the bandwidth wasn't available. But now it's just good manners to always have your video on and show yourself when you're in a meeting, not in a webinar, but in a meeting. All right. So Margaret, before you go on, there's a question. Uh, do you have a suggestion for a decent camera? A de decent camera. Um, Logitech makes some really good cameras. And I would encourage you to check some of the, to do a Google search and do the top 10 because it is changing so rapidly. But I will say also, if you have someone on speaker view and their camera isn't adequate, it will be highly pixelated. And so you want to show your case yourself to the best of your ability. So the camera is really important. I would get an opinion first if you really need to do that 
to get an additional camera. And of course, some people have several monitor screens that they use. So they always make sure that you're aware which screen you're actually on and looking at that camera. I've seen people have their presentation on another screen and then they're like this, watching and observing their presentation when the audience is straight in front of you. So yeah, my recommendation would be Logitech, but check the, out the top 10. And also you can check on Amazon. They usually have Amazon choices and there's feedback as well or Best Buy. You can watch and observe those. So good question. Heather, is there any other questions relative to camera? That's it for now. Okay, good. So video on or off is what we just spoke about. I would encourage you to always have your video on if you're a participant, if you plan on giving any kind of feedback in the audience, you want to contribute. But understand that you are on camera, even though you might have someone on speaker view, others may be in gallery view. So if you are leaning over on your hand, board or whatever, that will be evident to others that are in the audience and uh, or those that are attending attendees. And so you wanna always showcase yourself at your best and be aware that your facial expressions are being viewed as well and sometimes even recorded. So be aware of that and make sure that when you're on screen that you understand it's showtime, which is not about showing off, but it is about showcasing yourself at your best. And so you want to demonstrate that you're attentive, that you are enthused about the topic and the conversation, and that at some point you have something to contribute. Now, if you need to go get a glass of water, you need to answer the door, <laughs> you, um, any of those things, then go ahead and put video off. That's the etiquette of uh, virtual meetings. If you have to move off screen in any way, is to turn video off, do what you have to do, come back and uh, turn your video back on. I recently had it that I was doing some briefing for the judges for the international speech competition, the Toastmasters International World Championship of Public Speaking. And just as we were briefing the judges, Amazon rang my doorbell. So now I have signs that whenever I'm online, I have them outside that says, no knocking, no ringing, please. We are about to record. And um, But there's sometimes that things that are just out of your control. For instance, when we were recording the World Championship of Public Speaking, and I happen to be the contest chair that particular day. It was a Saturday morning. I wasn't expecting anything unusual. And I live on a golf course. And all of a sudden, they started mowing the golf course <laughs> outside. So there's some things that if you're in a meeting that you may not be able to control, your cat jumps up on your lap, you have a child that comes into the room, we are far more flexible and understanding about those things, but attempt to make that as little as possible and make that just that it happened accidentally and it was out of your control rather than just having it happen frequently and often. So virtual meeting etiquette, I spoke about that a moment ago about leaving the turning your video off, but also muting as well when you're in a meeting. In this webinar, we have the ability or you don't have the ability as attendees to speak up so that we can manage the sound. But in meetings, you also have that opportunity. The host 
has that opportunity to mute everyone. And of course, we've also all experienced, or many of us have experienced, Zoom bombers, where someone came in and put some graphic images or used language that was inappropriate. And Zoom has done an amazing job on rectifying, changing that. And now we all have passwords that we have to use. And so if you're putting your Zoom link out there for meetings, the security has really been enhanced so that hosts have the ability to eject someone out of the meeting immediately and so they can manage and control. And of course, now the process is that everyone goes into a meeting space ahead of time into a waiting room and they're brought into the meeting room when the host or the panelists feel it's time and ready. So as these problems occur and we understand them, Zoom and other technology providers virtual platform providers are finding ways to enhance and make sure that we all have a very good experience online. <laughs> backgrounds, virtual or not, when we first came out with virtual backgrounds or the big craze in February when we all moved to the online platforms very, very rapidly, my advice at that particular time was not to use a virtual background, to find some space in your home that you felt comfortable. It could even be in front of a door, whatever it was that wasn't busy and uh, that you felt comfortable about as opposed to using the virtual backgrounds because the virtual background often created this cyborg effect. Also, when I've been working with CEO and executive people, if they had a message to deliver, I encourage them to invite people into your homes to get a feel of who you are by sharing a little something about you, and it's far more effective. Well, the virtual world and technology developers have worked exceedingly hard to bring us a whole host of variety. And where before, ladies, we might have had uh, different shoes to showcase who we are or different jewelry to express who we are, we are now using virtual backgrounds to express who we are. It's today's accessory, if you will. If you have been challenged finding virtual backgrounds, then I would recommend a website called Unsplash. And on Unsplash, you can get all these photographs for free. And if you're a photographer, you can also post photographs. All they request is that the person that you using the photograph from is to send them a thank you and say thank you. So there's no fee and uh, there's beautiful, beautiful backgrounds that you can use to enhance or showcase who you are. I'm going to encourage you whatever you, and, and of course uh, you saw Anita at the beginning of our session that had her brand, had the Surrey Board of Trade, their logo, this is your opportunity to showcase your business and uh, make sure that that's, you are speaking from that voice of that organization. And uh, virtual backgrounds uh, will continue to improve. There's still a few little glitches that we sometimes see little spaces behind. And sometimes that's because the light again that's behind you, the fewer light sources behind you, such as a window or such as a light bulb or whatever behind you um, will affect how you show up in the virtual background. Now at the end of this, I'm going to show you a, cu a couple models of um, ring lights but I will take my virtual background off at that time because 
anything that you're wanting to hold up or bring in front of you as a demonstration, as a model, doesn't work well with a virtual background. So virtual backgrounds work well for showcasing yourself, but if you have visual aids of any kind that you will be holding in your hands, I encourage you to take off your virtual background and uh, have your natural background behind you so you can showcase those and those items won't pop in and out and uh, work very effectively for you. Also consider whatever your background is to have a contrasting color. If you have a dark background, wear something that's light. If you have a light background, wear something that's dark. Also encourage you to wear solids when you are on the virtual background. It gives the appearance of more strength, this has been the case even when we had people on the stage, decades of information about wearing solid colors is more effective than wearing anything with a pattern. And so the same would apply on a virtual meeting as it does on the stage. Solid colors are more effective and think about the contrast of the background and what image you're trying to portray or what the desired outcome is of this session. And I would encourage you always in every meeting besides thinking lights, camera, action, the showcase is to showcase yourself is also what's my desired outcome from this particular session, from this networking session, from this whatever it is, what is my outcome? And if you think about that in advance, you will be far more successful in getting results quicker, faster, better, is to have an outcome in mind. My outcome is to learn as much as possible about this. My outcome is to be seen in this meeting. My outcome is to give an effective um, piece of information here or to add to what's being shared in this, in this session. So whatever it is, be aware of your outcome and then also use everything at your disposal to achieve that outcome. I want to talk to you about, the mi about your microphone and your voice. It's critical, of course, that you be seen but if we have a choice between there's only enough to be heard or seen, then we want to make sure that you are heard. On this platform, the quality of your microphone is important and you can use various devices and I would encourage you to do some research, ask some people. I have an iMac, a brand new iMac, and when I got on there to do a virtual presentation, I realized I needed to make some adjustment to the sounds there. You could use headphones, and many, many people do if they're in meeting spaces where there's multiple people in the room to, so that you just hear what's going on. You can use earbuds um, and you can use headsets. But check out the quality. I have invested oodles of money in various microphones. And then when I've checked with participants on the line, I've tested this model, this model, this model. My laptop seemed to give the best sound. So be aware of that. Purchase, you can purchase something, you can try it out. And if it doesn't, isn't giving you a better sound quality, then you have, then uh, go ahead and, and send it back and uh, work on getting the best quality sound as possible. If you're working on an international audience, and many of us are these days because of our connectability, understand that other uh, international audiences where English is their second language, you have to slow down, you have to 
go much slower so that they're able to catch up and um, and understand that everything that you have to say. But the quality of your microphone is critical in, in a virtual platform. Sharing screens and presentations. Finally, to the sharing screens and presentations. So what you want to be able to do is instead of sharing a presentation from your desktop, you want to share it from the PowerPoint view and then go ahead and start from the beginning. There's many YouTube clips on how you do that, but we don't want to see all the extraneous material around to get the greatest impact from your presentation. And now even Zoom has been beta testing since last month, a very exciting, it may already be released. It's the opportunity for your presentation to be delivered in your virtual background and you just become this um, speaking voice in front of your virtual background, which it will be your presentation. So lots of exciting things happening as far as presentations go. Remember your audience is always, you have to look in your camera lens as opposed to the gallery view down below, which we're eager to see how our audience is accepting what we are saying but really to make that connection with them, you have to keep maintain eye contact with the camera up above. I imagine there are technology people right now working on that opportunity for the lens to be in the middle of the screen or to be somewhere else so that when we are looking at individuals, we end up uh, looking at our camera as well. I look forward to that. So we can connect on a way that we are accustomed to when we are speaking live in front of our audience. But no doubt there is more innovation to come in this space of virtual meetings. Do we have any questions, Heather? Uh, so we have some general questions if you want to get into that right now. Sure. Uh, so there's a question about etiquette rules for people while they're on screen. Do you have some tips? Yes, to make sure that your body language is effective, you're sitting up straight, you're maintaining eye contact with your audience and to show your screen. Don't pop in and out, pop in and out, pop in and out, pop in and out. That's very, very distracting. Make sure you're fully present and really attentive to the speaker. Smile when they're sharing information that you're eager to. Of course, if you are writing notes, then the expectation is that you are writing notes and, and gathering that information. But those are some of the uh, soft etiquette uh, around being a meeting is very similar to being in, an, in a live meeting or what we're actually calling now on-premise meeting because both, the, both virtual and on-premise are in person. So we've become known with on-premise meetings and uh, online meetings. Thanks for that question, Heather. Other question? So we have a question about how do you not be perceived as reading from a script while you're on screen? Well, don't read from a script. <laughs> know your material, but there are ways. There are definitely ways because sometimes the information that you have to share has to be shared word for word. Most of time speeches, I don't encourage it to be word for word. I have a process that I teach people and you go back to a table of contents, just like in the beginning of the book. And as long as you know your three key points or your five points or your seven points, and uh, there's some memory devices that I can certainly share, I'll provide an opportunity at the end of this session. I'm happy to meet with anyone. I'll mention it now. Uh, for 
on my website, which is www.margaretpage.com, there's an opportunity to set up a meeting, a 15 minute uh, consultation. I'm happy to meet you in a Zoom room and give you some suggestions and some uh, advice there. And so I could certainly help you out with that. But there is a process. However, there are some times, uh, for instance, a political message or a, a very high level message that has to be given in the way it was constructed so people know and understand. There's a couple ways. You can purchase a teleprompter and I will have to say that the technology isn't stellar, isn't stellar, but many of those that have been doing YouTube blogs, that's how they create their content. And uh, the one for the iPhone works very, very well that you can see your video of yourself and the teleprompter will give you so many words at a time. You can set the speed and then you can read it exactly as is. And of course, the key is still to be able to read it without looking like your eyes are going back and forth. But really, on a Zoom meeting, you don't need to go to the expense of purchasing a teleprompter. The camera will still capture you and you could pull up your Word document or wherever your note, your document on a screen in front of you and it won't show that you've got that piece of that, um, ver that um, file open in front of you and you can read it. You just need to be build up the skill of being able to read and stay connected with your camera. And that takes some time. And, the, and if you keep to about an arm length the way, it will be better than if you're too close. <coughs> Excuse me. Than if you're too close to the screen. But so those are the two ways, either do it from a Word document, in which case that you'll have to feed as you go down and have the font large enough and not spread across the page so much. And then you just um, turn the Zoom platform into, you, you hit the um, minimize. And so it will still be in a corner and you can move it around. You can move it to the right, to the left, to the bottom. You can you have the opportunity to move that Zoom um, panel anywhere you want, and then you can have your Word doc and no one would know. Now, the beauty of the teleprompter is that it actually goes, you can set this, the, the pace of it, and it's zero to 100 as fast as you want or as slow as you want. You can set the size of the font. The background can be dark and the front, uh, the, the words that are on there, light or vice versa. So it has a lot of flexibility. They range anywhere from about $40 to 60. Of course, it's US and I'm speaking about Apple products, but I'm sure Android has exactly the same thing. So there's a few products out there still need some work. However, you need to practice at being able to uh, read it without looking. And I think we're all in that area of needing to enhance in that area. Thank you for that question. Other question, Heather? Uh, so we have a question if you have some insight on how Zoom compares to other platforms like Microsoft Teams. They're both outstanding. Of course, if you're an investor and you have invested in Zoom, it, it's been a phenomenal investment and keeps continuing to climb and climb and climb. It's a stellar product, but Microsoft has also got a stellar project, um, product and uh, Microsoft Teams, actually your audience, can, you, it can put them in seats 
as opposed to pains. And so in the next year, I think we're going to see huge things as well. I believe there's also a Canadian company that has an online platform for meetings that uh, will be con continue to evolve. I will tell you that some Zoom, school, some school boards, when we went on February, March, April, some school boards pulled out of Zoom because of the hacking, the Zoom bombing that was going on and have gone to other platforms. And that's also provided opportunity in the marketplace to, for others to, to jump in. And sometimes the first to market isn't always the, the one that continues to thrive and be successful. So just keep watching and uh, using those other platforms as well, WebEx and BlueJeans and Slack. And of course, the fun one, which is about house party. Uh, there's lots of exciting things. And networking opportunities. There's speed networking that's going on in virtual meetings and mentoring. Lots of exciting things coming to the foreground because of the opportunities that are available. Anything else, Heather? Any other questions? So we have one more question. So I'm just going to tell the audience if there's any questions you do have for Margaret, now's a good time to get them into the Q&A. So our last question as of right now is, do you have any expert level Zoom tips, maybe some settings that people don't know about that they should, uh, should be enabling? Yes. So in, in the settings, you can enhance your picture. If you have a free account, I th you can set up a free account and then you have, you're able to have meetings that last 40 minutes long. But even in the free version, you can enhance your picture. So go ahead and that will remove some of the um, wrinkles and make you look best. And of course on the lighting, there's also two opportunities. There's warm and cool. And so, of course, the warm light will make you have a yellow tinge and the cool light will bring forward a, um, a more, a pinky. So be aware of that. Know and understand your skin colors as well as what would enhance you. But if you've been doing any videoing for stories or for Instagram, then you know that in, there's editing versions which will actually give you eyelashes, all kinds of things. I'm actually going to go, um, I'm just going to show another little tip here, but let me just finish or, or conclude here with, I hope that uh, in the last, uh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes that we've been together, you found ways to be more professional, have greater impact on attendees in meetings and connect in a more profound way. I want you to know that my website is uh, www.margaretpage.com and uh, you please do set up a meeting and I'm happy to do some one-on-one -on -one answer any questions or if you'd like to put a response on Google My Business would love to um, see you there. I'm going to stop sharing just so I can also share with you when you had asked about some additional, some additional um, tips. I'm going to share. There's also, this is my natural background that I'm on now. But in Zoom, there's also what are called these filters. And so I can add um, a hat if I want, I can add a mask if I want, or I can, which are kind of fun for social events and, and parties and anything like that. I can also change my screen. And so where you will find those settings are under the virtual backgrounds. And most of you, if you've done the update with Zoom, you will have access to all those kind of fun attributes that you can, you can uh, add to it. Now, I, I just wanted to show you the ring light. This is a ring light that I often use when I'm at my desk. And these are about $40. 
be cautious. Some of them, are, many products now are a hard plastic. And so you have to treat it tenderly and with care. And this also has the blue light and the warm light settings, about $40. And of course, you can get any kind of tripod. This is one that Apple delivers that goes into a selfie stick and you just put it in here and then you can record your videos for any of your presentations as well. Oh yes, and I wanted to, I had a, the microphones, there's, a, if you would like to enhance, there's these kind that you can just plug in. These are about 30 to $40, not uh, necessarily better quality. You can check it out. Sometimes it is better quality. There's also a device that you, Samsung creates. This is a rather expensive one. And, um, and then there's something called Go Mic that you can also use or a portable mic that you just plug into the USB. So it, they've simplified everything, made it easy. Even if you aren't a technology guru, it's very easy and the support they have nowadays from apps and everything will really help you to deliver the best possible way and, and master that lights, camera and action. Any other questions, Heather? Uh, no other questions have come in. So thank you so much, Margaret, for being with us this morning and sharing your insight on some tips and tricks for Zoom. And thank you to everyone for joining us this morning as well. We will be sending out an email with the recording so that you can watch it back and share it, as well as Margaret's contact information if you want to set up a meeting. So with that, make it a great business day. Indeed, make it a great business day. Thank you, Surrey Board of Trade.